Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You are the light of the world, the new wine and the new wine skin. You are the bright morning star. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. To God be the glory. I just wanted to bring this word as a, a, an encouragement and instruction from the Father because I believe that the Lord has been speaking to a lot of us. You know, the Bible says, blessed are your ears for they hear. And I always say that, yes, we hear the Father, but do we take time to listen to him? The Bible declares in the book of Isaiah, listen, listen. So we might hear, but are we listening? So there is a dimension of that in itself to God be the glory. So it's a place the Father has been. You know, I just wanted to share this with, with absolute love. And I'm going to start from this scripture in the book of Acts and chapter 9. It says, as he journeyed, he neared as he, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goats. So he, trembling, and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise, go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. Do you see it? This is what I keep saying. Sometimes the persecution that we are looking at is not from the outside. We are the ones persecuting Jesus. Yes, we can be the very author of the persecution of Jesus Christ. Because most of the time we can, we can look at outside forces and say, hey, it is that brother, it is that sister, it is that person, it's my mom, it's my dad. But the truth of it is sometimes we are the ones who is persecuting Christ himself because he wants to manifest and a lot of us are not giving him the opportunity to do so. Hence, why we grieve the Spirit. Do you see it? We grieve Holy Ghost because sometimes he has given us instructions, but we are yet to move on those instructions. So, I want us to look at it from this dimension. There are two dimensions I'm going to speak about today. I'm going to speak about ministry and I'm going to speak about work. And I'm going to lay it out as the Father has laid it. And I believe that this will be a confirmation to a lot of people because it is what the Father has been speaking to your spirit. So you can be in the first group and you can be in the second group. So it's a place where the Father has been speaking this and you can be in both at the same time. So we're going to look at this scripture from the book of Mark and sorry, Joshua and chapter one. You know, Mark chapter one, verse two to three says, behold, I send my messenger ahead of you to prepare the way for me. So we understand that sometimes the Lord can send people and sometimes the Lord can send his angels. And I keep saying to a lot of us that there are angels all around us, but most of the time because we're so busy. You know, we can get so busy for God. Yes, we can. Either with ministry or with people or with relationships or with work and things like that. And we don't have time to listen to him. That is why he's calling a lot of people into rest. Do you see it? Now, this in Joshua chapter one, he says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. Do you see it? He says, I'm about to give to what? The Israelites. So we understand that after Moses passed, the children of Israel, they were basically mourning over Moses. You know, Moses is dead because they've been so accustomed to Moses. But now, since Moses had died, the Lord turned his face away from Moses and said, hey, Joshua, we have work to do. It is time to go forth. And this is where the Lord has been helping us to understand that a lot of you, there is work to do for you. But then a lot of us are still holding on to the things of the past. We're still holding on to things of the past. Like I said, this is going to be in two dimensions. So as I'm speaking concerning ministry in this hour, you know, I'm speaking concerning ministry. The Lord has been calling, you know, the Lord encounter, had an encounter with Apostle Paul, encountered him on the way to what? Damascus. The Lord has encountered majority of you. A lot of you, you've come into your identity as a son. Yes, you've come into your identity as a son. But do you know what we tend to do? We tend to continue to look back. So what God has called you out of, we're still looking to that to be our saving grace. The Father has called you out of that sanctuary 
injury. The father has called you out of what? Out of the leadership in which you're basically sitting in. And he's saying, I'm calling you so that you and I can have this relationship that I have ordained for you right from the very beginning. But the truth of it is, we are not willing to move. So we're still holding on to that pastor. We're still holding on to that apostle. We're still holding on to that prophet. We're still holding on to that sanctuary. And we're saying, hey, you know, I, re I was reminded I'm just going to share this testimony to the glory of God, to the glory of God. You know, the Lord helped me to minister to this lady, you know, from the sanctuary that I was in before. And the Lord brought me out of that. And, you know, I met this lady on the road and um, the fa because, uh, you know, the father graced me to speak to her once, but I missed it. And he gave me the opportunity again to, to minister to her. And then the father was saying, hey, you know, I need you to come out of the place where you're at. It is not that the people are bad. It's not that they've done anything evil or whatever it is. No, they're amazing people. But because I want to take you further, there is a relationship that I have with you that I don't have with them. And I want to take you a lot further, you know, because I want to bring you to a place that I've always promised you that I will bring you to. But do you know what the woman did? She said, no, you know, those people, they've been there for me. I was, you know, I was, you know, since when I was in trouble, they were there, they were helping me, they stood by me, they did all of these things. And I just, I just said, mercy, to God be the glory, may the Lord have mercy on you. And in that moment, I left and I just walked away. And I understood it later because the Lord was saying for her, she has been praying, you know, for a lot of things, but the Lord could not manifest what she wanted in the midst of where she was. And that's the reason why the Lord had to bring her, wanted to bring her out to manifest the promises. You know, sometimes the Lord can want to bless us, but he cannot bless us in the midst of the things or the people that we are with. Hence the reason why delays occur. So you can see it. That is why Jesus had to tell Matthew, follow me. He abandoned the tax booth. The Lord commanded um, Peter, follow me. He abandoned his nets and his boats. The Lord commanded, you know, the disciples to follow and they abandoned what they were what, holding on to, to follow Christ Jesus. But a lot of us, we're saying we're following Christ and at the same time holding on to those things that is what? Asking us to let go. And we're trying to bring those things and we're trying to bring it into Christ Jesus. But he loves you very much. And once again, he is coming out to you and he said, I am calling you out because a lot of you, you have places to go. A lot of you, you have things to do. A lot of you, the assignment has been set and he wants to give you the instructions for your assignment. And if you don't leave where you are, he cannot release that to you, that in which he has promised. A lot of you might say, wow, that's not true. Ask Abraham. You know, the Bible said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, leave your father house to a land I will show you. The command was for Abraham. So now you see why I was talking about the woman? The command was for her, but she was bringing everybody along. The command was for Abraham, but it brought lots along. Now, we can, the Bible does not tell us how many years that Abraham has been holding on to Lot. Do you see it? It didn't tell us. But the Bible helps us to understand in Genesis chapter 13 that what? Lot decided to go and meet Abraham. He said, look, you know, you've got so many animals. I've got so many animals. And I don't want strife to ensue between us. So let us go our separate ways. So when Lot left Abraham. Can you see it? When Lot left Abraham, the Bible declares immediately after Lot departed from Abraham, God minister to Abraham. Abraham, lift up your eyes. You see the land that is before you to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, it belongs to you. So how long has Abraham been on the same land but did not hear God until Lot left them? So now you can begin to see it. Your next instruction is based on your obedience. Your next instruction is based. So now you can begin to see it. The children of Israel, they had gathered before the Red Sea and they didn't know what to do until the Lord spoke to Moses. So now you can begin to see it that some of you are at the edge of what? Of your breakthrough. The, some of you are at the edge of your promotion. Some of you are at the edge of your coming out of the wilderness. And it is just that instruction in obedience, obeying that instruction that will eventually allow you to cross to where you need to get to. So you can begin to see it. 
They were mourning over Moses. Some of you are mourning in these places, in the sanctuaries that you're in. You're still mourning. Hey, I can't let that person go. You know, some of you, you go, the father has said, hey, I want you to sit at home with me. I know that people go to church on Sundays. I know that you have to be with family or whatever it is on Sundays or whatever that you have to do. But do you know what? I've been in your house all this while. I've been sitting, waiting on you so that you and I can have this conversation so that you and I can eventually go into the dimension where I need to take you to. But no, we kickstart our engine. We take on the bus. We get on the train and we're going to these sanctuaries. And basically, we're going to look for Jesus in those sanctuaries while Jesus is waiting for you at home. So you can begin to see it. You know, the Bible says, he who dwells in the secret place, the secret place is where he has told you to stay. It's not in what you're looking for. That is why I said a lot of us are so busy with all of these things. That is why sometimes we get tired quickly. <laughs> Do you see it? To God be the glory. So now you begin to understand. He says, Moses, my servant is dead. That place where you're at, to you, it's not to the people that are there, but to you, it is dead. It is dead because I am no longer in it for you. <laughs> so the other people, they might be experiencing Christ in the place, to God be the glory. But for you, it is dead. Why? Because I am not, you know, you might call unto me, you know, but I am not, I am not there for you. I am where I have told you to stay. I am where I have told you to go to and wait for me. Jesus told the disciples, go to Jerusalem and wait until you are endued with power. So where Jesus has told you to wait in your home, in your car, wherever he has said for you to wait is where his presence is. That is where you are going to experience the next thing that the father is instructing that he wants to give you. So you can begin to see it. Look at Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. In the book of Acts chapter 9, he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, what? Well, arise and go into the city and you will be told. Do you see him? He said, you will be told. Jesus says, stay at home and you will be told. Stay where I have asked you to stay and you will be told. So a lot of us are missing encounters with the Lord. This is a pivotal time in the spirit. And we're missing the encounters of the Lord because we are not waiting where he told us to wait. To God be the glory. So now you can understand. Now I want us to look at this from the dimension of Genesis and chapter 26. This is why I said to you that because of your obedience, a lot of people are going to get blessed. Because of what? Your obedience. A lot of people are going to get blessed. So you see when, G, when God told Abraham, leave your father's house to a land I will show you. And he eventually blessed him. Now look at what happened a few chapters after that. The Bible says, now there was famine in the land besides the what? Previous famine in Abraham's time. Then and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. And the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go down to Egypt. Leave in the land where I tell you to leave. Do you see what God said? Leave in the land where I tell you to leave. Stay in this land for a while and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all this land and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands and through your offsprings all nations on earth will be blessed because look at the emphasis on verse 5 it says because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him keeping my commands my decrees and my instructions so now the instruction came to Isaac because Abraham obeyed so because of your obedience a lot of people are going to get blessed so the Lord has released a lot of you from, from Christianity into sonship. And now he says, I want to minister to you as a son, but we are going back to Christianity to go and learn the things of Christian. He has set you free and you're going back to slavery. Does God love those people? Yes, but he's saying to you, follow me. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 19, it says those who have followed me, they will what? It will, they will reward them in this life. You know, they will, you know, you left fathers, you left mothers, you left everything for my sake. You will reap that reward in this life and what? Eternal life. So a lot of you are even missing rewards because you have refused to follow him. You continue to stay in that place where he has called you from. People are waiting and they cannot move forward until you are speaking, until you have been obedient, not until you are speaking, but until you have been obedient to him. 
So you might be doing things at the moment and it looks like, hey, I'm still prospering. There comes a time that he will have to shut it down until you obey. Abraham could not do anything until he what? He separated from Lot. There came a time he was prospering. Can you see? He was moving. He was fighting. He was doing all of these things. You know, he was looking like everything was going good. Then at some point, it's, there was nothing. He couldn't do anything anymore until he obeyed. The first instruction, Abraham leave, not Abraham and Lot leave. So this is the dimension that the father is calling a lot of us to. So majority of the time, like I said to you, you know, I was in, I was in sanctuary for a long time and un, until the Lord said, it is time to move away from there. And in obedience, I had to say goodbye to everybody because you know why? God loves those people. He loves those people, but it is not about them. It is about you because you have a calling upon your life that they cannot satisfy. So now that you've come into your sonship, you're going back into that to go and sit into it. And now you're learning the ways of slavery again when he has told you i want to lead you in your identity this is what happened to the children of israel in the wilderness because after they had left egypt do you see what they were doing they were going around in the wilderness and they couldn't go because they kept thinking that egypt was much more better and this is why i keep saying to you that a lot of people you are still looking back at what christianity and religion and going to sit in these places when the lord is calling you out of it to God be the glory. Now to the next one. The Bible declares in the book of John chapter 21. Look at what happened in John chapter 21. Isn't it amazing? Because most of the time, we have to be careful of the people that we are following at the same time. In John 21, it says, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the, seas of, at the Sea of Tiberias. And in the way he showed himself, Simon Peter called the twin, Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of, Gal of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. Then they said to him, we are going with you also. They went out immediately, got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. So you can begin to see it that somebody in a place of leadership can still stay you wrong. Peter, God had called him out of that place. He was working as a fisherman. God, when Jesus went to him and called him and said, you will no longer be fishers of men. I'm fisher. You will no longer be a fisherman, but a fishers of man. So now look at it. He called him out of work so that he can go forth in what? In following Jesus. But when they waited on Jesus and they couldn't see Jesus coming, what did they do? They went back into working. Now they were toiling. You can see the same thing he said to Jesus when he met him. I, I've told all night. I didn't catch anything. It's the same thing he's saying to Jesus here. I've gone and told all night. I caught nothing. And it was Peter who decided to lead the people back into what? Into work. And he said, no, that is not my will. So now when Jesus came and rescued him, when Jesus came, rescued him, he said, bring the fish you caught here. Did Jesus use the fish Peter caught? No, there was already fish and stove on, there was already fish on the stove and bread right there because Jesus had manifested a new way for the disciples. So you can begin to understand it, that Jesus had to rescue him yet again. Now, a lot of you are in places, maybe in a place of work, in the job that you're in, and you're, you know, around the relationships that you're in, and things like that. And he has been calling you out of those relationships. He has been calling you out of that place of work. But yet, you still continue to hang around that relationship. You still continue to go into that place of work. But yet, he has called you out of the place. But you're toiling. That's what the Bible calls it. So now you can begin to understand it, that he's calling you yet again out of this place because there are people that are waiting on you. Now you can see what Jesus had to tell Peter the second time. He said to him the first time, follow me. The second time he said again, follow me. So he followed the first time, went back. Then again, Jesus had to call him to follow. But we thank God that Apostle Peter did not look back once he had done that. Apostle Paul, once he came out, he was a Pharisee. He had learned the ways of the law. But when he encountered Jesus, he was taken on a new path. That's why Jesus came. He was going to sanctuaries, to synagogues, and he was preaching to them. But he could only bring out a handful because he wanted to bring them into the knowledge of who they are. 
And every time he did that, they stoned him. So this is where you have to understand that he's calling you out of those places yet again. He's sitting with you. He loves you so very much that he's coming to call you once again. Come out of those places because we have work to do. Sit down with me in your house. We have conversations that need to be had. There are mysteries that I need to explain to you. There is the scripture that I need you to understand. I, have give, I want to give you new teachers that will teach you what I am explaining in this dimension. Do you know, can I share a secret with you? That every time you come into a new realm, the Lord gives you a new teacher. Do you know that? Because the Bible declares, it says, I will give you a shepherd after my own heart. And every realm, the Bible says, come up higher. There are things that I desire to show you. And every time he wants to show you something, he gives you a new person to lead you into that in which he's trying to show you. But a lot of us, we can't go into mysteries because we are still sitting under religion. Can you see it? He wants you to become the mystery. But all you can do in religion is taste and see. Because he says, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So you're experiencing freedom, but you're not experiencing it indeed. So now you begin to understand it. What does he say? So now let's look at it. In Mark chapter 7, I want us to look at Mark chapter 7. And this is what Jesus said in Mark chapter 7. He says here, Ah, oh, to God be the glory. <laughs> Father, I just bless you. And I thank you for the hearts that are listening and the ears that are listening to that in which you're speaking. And I just bless you because your name is being glorified. The Bible says here, in Mark chapter 8, sorry. It says, Then he came to Bethsaida. They brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. And when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands on him and he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Then he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into that town nor tell anyone in that town. Now, do you know the mystery of the scripture? This is the mystery. Verse 26. Then he sent him away to his house, saying. So now, the Bible says in verse 22, that he came to Bethsaida. So the man stumbled into Bethsaida. <laughs> Do you see it? The man somehow stumbled into Bethsaida. And because he stumbled, in, the Bible says he was restored. So that means the man could see before. So he went into Bethsaida and could see no more. Now he needed people to help him around. Now, upon bringing him out, Jesus restored his eyes and he said, don't go back into that Bethsaida again. Go home. So, Bethsaida was not his home. <laughs> Do you see him? Bethsaida was not his home. He stumbled into Bethsaida. Now, Jesus had to come and rescue him from Bethsaida, restore his eyes and warned him, do not go back into what? Into that town. This is what the Lord is saying to you, that where I am bringing you out from, don't return there. If I bring you out of that sanctuary, don't return there. If I bring you out of that relationship, don't return there. I'm not talking about marriage now <laughs> because, because a lot of people might get excited and say, hey, it's really see me finally. No, 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 no. God hates the Voice. But I'm speaking to those in the, the, which the Lord has been speaking to you to either leave that sanctuary, leave that leader, or leave that place of work. Do you see him? He says he brought the man out and he says, when I bring you out, don't go back into it again. Because the Lord wants to do amazing things in your life. Do you see it? He wants to do amazing things in your life. He wants to do amazing things in your life. So this is where he's calling you out yet again. The Bible declares, he says that what? He said, he called Abraham out of his father's house. He called him out. He called him out of his father's house to a land I will show you. So a lot of you are standing at the edge of the land. But until you let go of the want of what the Lord has told you to let go of, he, want, he cannot show you what's next. It's in the Bible. It's the scripture. It's in the Bible. It's in the scripture. It's in the Bible. The Bible is the word because Jesus did it. God did it because his word does not return to him void. And the Bible tells us he honors his word above his name. And this is where he's calling you out again. So Joshua, do you see it? Joshua, 
I repeat, Joshua, it is time for you to what? Move in what I am calling you to do because Moses is dead. Where you are is no longer working for you. It cannot work for you anymore. If it was working for you before, it has stopped working. Peter told all night, it stopped working for Peter. Peter went back to it again, it was not working. And Jesus had to come to rescue with Apostle, with, um, with Moses, with uh, Joshua. You know, he had to, they had to let go of Moses because it was a leadership that he was coming into. A lot of you are about to come into a leadership position. You're about to come into a place where the Father is giving you what belongs to you. It belongs, that ministry, that business, that sanctuary, that marriage, it belongs to you. And the Father is saying, until you let go. You know, I've been speaking to a lot of us. Until you let go, he cannot show you what's next. So you can be there and like, hey, Father, you know, ah, Lord, you know, you said you have great promises for me. I'm still here. I'm doing. So a lot of you, you're still serving when you're supposed to be leading. And he's saying your time of what? Serving is over. Because the Bible tells us that when the apostles, after they finished serving with Jesus, he says they waited in Jerusalem when it was time for them to come into a place of what? Leadership. You're about to come into the place of marriage. You're about to come into the place of your business. You're about to come into the place of your ministry. But until you let go, he cannot show you what's next. It is the word of God. And God honors his word above his name. So this is what I'm about to bring to you. This is what the Lord is speaking to each and every one of us at this particular moment. So it's a place where you begin to ask, Father, what are you asking me to let go of? So I've already explained to you that for some of you, it's ministry. Right? The ministry, the sanctuary that you're in, the leadership that you're under, the going to sanctuaries every Sunday, is saying enough is enough because I want to bring you into what rightfully belongs to you. Do you see it? So we thank God for that dimension. And this is what he's now sharing with you in Joshua chapter 1. And he says, after the death of Moses. That place to you, it is over. That place, that work, that business, I mean that job in which you're in, that sanctuary, it is over. My servant is dead. And he said that what? He says that what? He said, Joshua, son, son of Nun. Yes? He says, Moses aid. Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people. So there are people the Lord wants to give you. But until you let go, you cannot receive. There are some times when you're still in that dimension where you are holding on and it blesses you. But in this dimension, it's all about relationship. In this dimension that you're in, you have to let go to be able to receive. Because that in which you're pursuing eventually will come to an end. Because you know why? The Father has been instructing you, but you're yet to be obedient. Don't grieve this spirit. Yes? He says, do not grieve the spirit. The more you continue to refuse these instructions, you're grieving Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, I just bless you with life and I bless you with the grace to be obedient. He has given us grace upon grace and I release that grace and the mercy of God unto you that you will basically let go in order to embrace what he has for you. Jesus is waiting for you in your house. Jesus is waiting for you in the place where he told you to arise and what? Go and stay there because there are things he wants to instruct to you because there are angels around you. Holy Ghost is with you. Jesus is with you. The Father is with you because you're before the throne and he's here to release to you what he wants to say to you. And I pray, blessed are your ears for they hear in Jesus' mighty name. I love you all so very, very much. I love you. I really do. Amen.